Good morning and welcome back to the Accountability Project. Uh, today is a beautiful morning, so again, I wanted to give you guys a view of the sun coming up over the ocean. Amazing, amazing way to get up in the morning, do your workout, watch this, this sunrise, and get your morning reading in. So today, Science of Success, uh, another short chapter. Um, again, talking about uh, how there is no such thing as a self-made man. Um, that that if someone says they're a self-made man, that just kind of exposes their ignorance to the fact that they didn't realize that, that other people had helped them along the way or they're not acknowledging that fact. Um, and this chapter wants to talk about how helping other people around you raise their game, raise their level of success is not only fulfilling for you, but also uh, creates an environment um, of growth and prosperity throughout a community, throughout a state, throughout a nation, and, and that we should really start to take on the mindset of, uh, if everyone who was successful decided to adopt someone who was trying to be successful and, and maybe, maybe help them by, by giving them mentorship, maybe help them by, by uh, helping them take the next step towards their success that maybe they, they couldn't achieve on their own, um, then we'd, we'd have it just, just tons of people becoming more and more successful because there's, there's a hand up that they can grab instead of a hand out that keeps them sedated um, and, and um, unproductive. So uh, I love the chapter, I love the heart of the chapter because the heart of the chapter is that once you, once you reach a certain level of success, and he shared this about him, once he got out of debt, he was completely debt free and, and had made a significant amount of money, he, he, he felt like there was a burn that he had kind of lost because he, see, he kind of enjoyed the fight of getting free. And once he was free, he was like, hey, well, let me help someone else. Let me get in, let, let, me, let me fight side by side with someone else to help them get their freedom, their, their financial success. Um, because sit, sitting at home alone, I, I, don't, I don't get the rush because I wasn't in the fight anymore. Um, and, and I think that's a beautiful thing and it shows the heart and character of Napoleon Hill through the ways that he developed his, his wealth and the fact that he passed that on and shared it with millions of people. Um, next up, don't eat the marshmallows yet. So uh, today's chapter was a, a, a little bit longer for this book. It was still a, a quick read, um, but it was extra, exercising marshmallow resistance. So in this, he, he shared a story um, told by Mahatma Gandhi's grandson, ultimately, um, about his grand or about Mahatma Gandhi's son um, as a father raising him. He said, uh, as a teenager, <clears throat> he, he had gone to the the um, to to drive his his father to a business meeting, and then when that meeting or when he dropped him off, his his father said, "Hey, um, I need you to take the car, go to the mechanic." get the car fixed, they're expecting you, they're expecting the car. Uh, when it's done, I need you to come back here and be here at five o'clock on the dot to pick me up so I can go home and rest. Well, the son, yes sir, takes the car to the auto mechanic shop. Well, about noon, they finish up early and they give him the keys. Now he's a 17 year old boy with car keys and five hours to burn. So he decides he's gonna go to the movie theater he goes to the movie theater and watches a double feature. And at 6, 6, 6.30, by the time he realizes that, oh my gosh, I am late. So he gets in the car and rushes over to pick up his dad and jumps out of the car and his father's like, are you okay, what happened? And his son said, you know, those, those stupid mechanics, they, they took forever and, and they just finished, so I came over here right away. Well, his father said, didn't say, but his father knew that they had finished at noon. They had called him and let him know that, that the car was ready um, and that they were giving the keys to his son. And, and so his father took, instead of an ex, external approach, he took an internal approach. And I love this because it tied back to, to a book we had previously read um, about, about doing work from the inside out instead of from the outside in. So the, the marshmallow would have been to punish the son right then because he knew that his son was lying. But instead, he did something that it, only someone with that level of wisdom <clears throat> could do because I, I don't know that I would have the self-discipline to do this. I might be a marshmallow eater. 
what he did was he said, son, take the car, go home. I have to walk today. And his son said, well, why do you have to walk today? He said, well, son, if after 17 years, I haven't developed enough trust in from you to me for you to tell me the truth, then I'm a bad father and I need to meditate on my walk home what I can do to be a better father. And so he started walking and he walked the, the 15 kilometers to get home. His son, the, the, the whole time with the car right next to him saying, dad, get in, don't do this. Dad, no, get in, don't do this. And apparently it took several hours and it was 11 o'clock <clears throat> by the time they got home, 11, 11.30. His father didn't say anything, just walked in the house and went to bed. Now the beauty of this is that that son <clears throat> took that lesson that his father shared with him about honesty. And from then forward, he never lied to another person again. So the father had enough self-discipline to look internally at how to be a better father to teach the lesson of honesty. And the son saw how, how much restraint his father had and how important honesty was that his father would walk that distance, even though he was already a little bit older and, and maybe had some medical stuff going on, which is why he needed to get home and rest. But he took the self-discipline to go do that. Um, one other thing that, that was, was quoted in this chapter uh, was from Mahatma Gandhi himself. He said, ultimately, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, <laughs> that anyone could have done and could do what I have done if they took the actions, the effort, the hope, and the faith in what they're doing. And I believe that to be completely true which is why I'm, I'm making these videos, which is why I'm, I'm out per pursuing um, excellence in multiple areas of my life and finance and fitness and faith and family, um, because I wanna be an example to everyone around me that you can be successful in those areas, as well as an example that if you don't have to be Mahatma Gandhi to be, to be successful. You can be you and you can be successful. So with that, uh, this is the Accountability Project. Stay accountable, condense the pain of growth, and let's get it, bloop.